It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1753, recorded Thursday, November 14th, 2019. It barks and bites. This episode of the Gizwiz, we have three gadgets from CES unveiled. I have another micro mini gadget, and this one will surprise you and your videos that are old gadgets. All next on the Gizwiz. It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease, under pathology, frozen rows of USBs, growing, growing LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now, and here he is, your mountain man for the mountain of gadgets that you're about ready to get, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir, and you? Doing good myself, doing very good. Excellent. Yeah, well, we're recording this one. I don't know why I like to talk about what's going on in the moment, because anyone watching after the fact, I, I don't know, I like to bring them into the live show. We're recording this one oh, okay. a tiny bit late. Oh, uh, yeah, 28 to... minutes late yeah. because I went to uh, a, show, a Pepcom show called Well Now, which is about uh, health gadgets. And actually, uh, I found uh, three things that we'll nice. use on next week's show. The one thing I don't like about Well Now is that they keep up the theme of Well Now with the caterers. <laughs> so there oh, is no. nothing, there is oh, nothing no. warm, uh. nothing hot, no meat, no frankfurters, no hot dogs. Uh. Everything it's... was under a hundred calories. Every, <laughs> every. It was gluten free cookies. Yeah. Uh, turkey wraps was And you the, looked at uh, all that food and went, uh, well now, uh, Yeah, so yes, know, exactly, no, that's I... exactly. <laughs> well now, maybe I won't come next year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they had a monster salad bar. And, and I, I, uh, I, I found a, a few, uh, fun things. So it was certainly worth it, but, uh. It was not the runaround. What what's, what's turkey? Uh, what what table has the turkey and the stuffing? Where's the Double cheese? Over there they have the ham. Yes, yeah. it's like... Where are the ravioli table? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is very funny. I was I was thinking that they were going to go with like, you know, over over, you know, like I don't know, nurses dressed up or like like oh, syringes oh, 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 of oh, like that kind of well drinks now, yeah. or something, you know? I don't know. I thought they were going to go for the hospital theme. No, no. But. This is to stay healthy so you don't have to have the right. nurse. Uh, exactly. Because yeah. this, is, this is Pepcom, right? Uh, this, is, this was Pepcom. Yeah, because exactly. they always do a theme. They like to theme yes. their events. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. So you, uh, you tweeted something that suddenly had me worried, and then yeah. I found out I don't have to be worried, but you do. You don't have to be worried, I don't think, um, unless if you plan on making cartoons anytime soon. Uh, no, but no, no. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, I don't know if it's, I don't know how to pronounce it out loud, COPPA, COPPA, but C-O-P-P-A, which is the Child Online Protection, well, some another act. Uh, basically, oh, this is, I this has been in effect for a while. This is, this is a law that's been around for a long time. It's one of the reasons that many websites uh, will not allow people who are under 13 to use their website, because... This law states that a company cannot gather data on a child who is under 13. Um, and this has been, like I said, it's been, it's been around for a while. And if you are going to collect data on that child, you need the parent's permission before you do it. So, like, I remember having to go through a whole, when I was super young, you know, on things like uh, Neopets. You know, they have a whole system so that your parents can sign a child up and then they can collect data on, you know, and the data can, it's like pretty simple stuff, like saving a playlist or something like that. So what's happened is uh, there's been a lawsuit uh, against U YouTube. This is already passed and it's already happened. And because of that lawsuit, YouTube had to create the system so that they can make sure to shut off tracking of children 
much more in depth than they are right now. And right now it's basically like, don't sign up for an account if you're 13 years or older or, or younger. Uh, and now they're going much more in depth into it. And what this means for creators is weirdly, a lot of the responsibility has been put onto the individual content creator about their content. So now as a creator, I have to label my content as appealing to children. And if it does appeal to children, then YouTube will strip the video of any type of personalized ad. It'll shut off certain features that are normally on YouTube videos like comments or saving to a playlist. Basically, it takes any data collection away oh, from I that see. specific I... video or that specific content creator if you say that all of your content appeals to children. So I'm in a weird gray area because my content could appeal to children. I don't make my content specifically to target 13 and younger, but there's a chance that a child who is 13 or younger could watch my videos. They, now we're talking about probably Minecraft, right? Right, because I make Minecraft yeah, videos. Yeah. Now, yeah. the thing is, is that they do describe appealing, they, they have some terms for appealing to children, and they are pretty, <laughs> they're, they, to be honest, it's not the type of content that I make. It's like, must have cartoon characters, child actors, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. It's like oh, Nick oh, Jr., like, it's really Nick Jr. level. So I think I'm in the clear because... It, I really, none of my content does that. It doesn't target children in that way of, you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of different, you know, ways that they describe child-focused content. Um, here's the kicker, though, is that, so I've went ahead and said my content is not specifically designed to, to target children. So I've set that for, for my uh, uh, channel. YouTube is going to use their own algorithms, you know, machine learning, to determine whether or not they think that the content appeals to children. And so they may flip a switch and says, yep, this content, that appeals to children, and we're gonna determine that we do that. By the way, turning off personalized ads would also like turn off like 80% of revenue that comes from these type of videos. So we're talking like a lot of revenue lost. Wow. I totally made that number up. Uh, by the yeah, way. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> um, but, but that's really where you get most of, of your income because an ad company is bidding on a certain type of audience and that's where you get your ads from. And if so the ad company has no idea what type of audience they're gonna get. They're not gonna spend a whole bunch of money for that ad and so that's, you lose a ton of revenue by turning off personalized ads. Um, the other, so A, the kicker is that machine algorithms could just say, hey, we, you chose wrong, and we're gonna um, uh, turn on this feature that you know none of the personalized ads or that sort of stuff. And then the other kicker is it's been floated out there because it's apparently written in the law. I have not read this law myself. I've only seen this from other people's tweets and, and secondhand. But there's a $46,000 fine if you are caught violating the law which would be applied to the creator. Once again, I haven't read that for myself. I have not verified that, but that's also the terrifying thing that a creator, because they make content that children might watch, you know, that's the doomsday sort of scare tactic angle right. of all this is that, okay, someone who's young watched my video and now I'm, you know, hit with this huge fine as a creator. Um, so anyway, that's, now, that's does point. it matter if you don't have any ads on your videos? So if you don't run ads, um, it matters less because okay. a, a lot of YouTubers are freaking out because this will directly hit their bottom line. Right. Um, it still matters because the content that YouTube would automatically serve if they thought that your content wasn't going to go to a, a child is going to include things like comments. And so if a child oh, under 13 commented on that video, then they would be in violation of the law. So if you don't run ads, you still should mark your content as appealing to children. That way they can turn off all of those external features 
Um, so people can't add your video to playlists, they can't do, there's all these weird things that are basically con collecting data, collecting a user account on, on someone. Um, yeah. So yeah. No, I was in there and I checked that my content, uh, this is the, the videos that I make for this show or, and right. just for laughs, uh, I checked off that they don't appeal to children or adults. So <laughs> there you go. I'm oh. totally... Right. I'm totally in the clear. Completely covered. I said, it, I said possibly a few animals, but I can't verify that. So I right. don't think they'll trouble me. So like, here's their um, list of, according to the FCC's guidelines, here's a ch children are the primary audience, factors described below. And so here are all the factors, like subject matter of the video, whether children are your intended actual audience, no. It includes child actors. Well, first of all, it said educational content. We're out right there. <laughs> this isn't educational at all. So there's <laughs> a whole bunch of factors, and, and I think I'm in this weird gray area, but I'm... Yes, yeah, I can I'm, see. I'm more on the side of, I don't, and I mean, to be honest, I don't make my content to, to go only to children. There is YouTubers out there that do, like... Ryan's toy reviews and that sort of stuff where they make content that is so obviously made for kids. They use cartoons and their animations and all that sort of stuff that is directly focused on children. So luckily I'm like, whew, I don't think I qualify, <laughs> um, but it is terrifying. I mean, it just really kind of highlights how shaky of ground online content creators uh, stand on. You know, there's no, yeah. We don't own the platform. We don't really own anything other than our own videos. But if the the network that we use to publish those videos doesn't like us anymore, eh, nothing yeah. you can do. Yeah, should have gotten a <laughs> normal job. So yeah. So that's yeah. That's been the, the drama for uh, wow. me over the last week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, is there more? Isn't there work. some like CES stuff that kind of went down? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what. Um, it was CNS, uh, uh, CES Unveiled, and the, uh, it was last Thursday. And it's kind of fun because they bring you up to date as to, to what CES is going to be like 2020. And to them and maybe to the exhibitors, it's very exciting. Uh, but to the press, it's more of us sitting in the back row and rolling your eyes when you hear uh, that there are 4,500 companies exhibiting – from 120 countries, there is 6,000 registered members of the press. All this means is that you're not going to be able to walk anywhere, do anything. And it was also a major announcement. So luckily, the CES PR department took all of the speeches and made them into a seven-minute video. And I made that into a 90-second video. <laughs> And then I added 40 seconds of a little video from CES 2019 so people can realize it's not the glamorous thing that they think it is. So uh, here's, here's a two-minute a two minute and 20-second video. The, starting major, out with Gary Major, uh, major Shapiro. announcement. Oh, you should be the Here edge of your seats at this point. Because we're actually going to be doing something, and there's people here today, with the World Bank focused on how to use technology to solve the world's global problems. We will join forces with the World Bank, which is a source of financial and technical assistance to developing countries around the world. And what we're doing, we're working with them to focus on the biggest problems that we could encounter in the world, including health, including gender barriers, and tech that enables resilience, because we need resilience. And that's part of the CES increasingly is resilience. And resilience means you can withstand very bad things that happen. It involves localism, it involves smart cities, it involves so many things because of climate change, because of others, we have to be more resilient. I look forward to seeing you at CES. It's the biggest, coolest, funnest, largest business event, tech event in the world. And so this is a little bit of CES unveiled and it was very noisy there. Very hard to shoot, but uh, CES has photographers, and we use some of their video. And so this is the event that takes place at the Metro Pavilion, 
And I'm going to talk about the uh, Roby robots. That's one of the things I picked. I'm going to talk about the new Ibo from Sony. Now, this is 2019. So this is what it's like in the hallway. Yeah. As you try to get in <laughs> some of the exhibits. Now, the exhibits are, like, overwhelming. I think this was LG with, like, 10,000 monitors. But just walking from place to place you can play you could play ping pong against a robot if you don't mind being uh, 57th in line to do that there's a lot of business to business uh, uh, people sh displaying there and amazingly a USA Today newspaper picked CES as one of the best 10 car shows in yeah. America so and it's car, like as uh, as the actual car show is going on, like CES is also in Vegas doing the same thing, but like huge. Yes, exactly, exactly. The uh, North Hall used to be all the mom and pop accessories, and then and then more and more cars took over, and now the mom and pop accessories are like an aisle against the far wall, and the rest is all monster car displays so that is a huge part of ces is uh the car the the uh, automobile business and so the three thing the one thing i saw it's a year away but i thought it was just amazing the folding and, mate no oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the thing called Hot Hero, and I'll let the CEO uh, of Hot Hero explain it, and, and this is him. My name and, is and Gary Montague, the CEO and founder of Heart Hero, and formerly a CIA medical officer. As a CIA medical officer, my job was to make sure that my team went home to their families. Now, my passion in running and founding this AED company is to make sure that sudden cardiac arrest victims go home to their families. Sudden cardiac arrest, it's a massive problem. It kills more people than breast, lung, colon, and prostate cancer each year in the United States combined. But we don't talk about it because it is so a matter of fact. It is so instantaneous in what happens. One minute your family's happy and you're planning for your future and what's your next vacation, the next minute, they're trying to figure out what coffin to put you in. The solution is an AED. An AED works, but it's not in the homes. And I think that that is a travesty. This AED will revolutionize the industry. It is easy to use. It's portable. It's affordable. It's going to cost less than half of what's on the market today. The impact that we will have is huge on a global scale. This is the butterfly effect. The people that we save, could they go on to cure cancer or Alzheimer's? Or more importantly, could they go on to just spending another 20 to 30 years with their family? And is there anything more important than that? Heart Hero is selling more than just a device. We're selling hope. That is actually really cool. Uh, uh, huh. So yeah, I, I spoke to the guy and uh, he said, uh, I said, you know, do you have a vague uh, uh, price in mind? And he said, the the cheapest uh, AED now is sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah. And he said, so we're shooting for half that. We're shooting for eight hundred. Mm -hmm. And he said, then when people start buying them, we hope to get it down to like four ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah. So they will could really be a mass market thing. But I said, what about the fear of of people using it? And he said, well, first of all. The when you when you put the pads on somebody, it instantly checks the heart rate. It right. will not give the person a shock unless it can do something. Right. If, if the person has passed on, he said you can't kill them again. Um, <laughs> the thing is the size of a book. And I, I said to him, I said, so is this prototype uh, kind of what it will look like? And he said, no, this is it. He said, this is the what we have he said it is all of the uh permits and all of the testing that we will have to go through right to market it directly to the public and he said that could be up to a year right right before but i thought you know what if that was in your home and someone 
fell on the ground clutching their chest. My God, right. I would use that in a second. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. I mean, I just like the the one thing that's going through my mind is like, get it cheaper, get it cheaper, get it cheaper. Yes, yes. Exactly. You know, it's like this this it seems so simple battery to shock someone you know sensors make sure the heart's not going give it to them um but i'm sure that regulation is insane and, yes licensing insane. and all that these sort of stuff i can't imagine and how, lawsuits and insurance right. and right. yeah and the other thing i thought like you know, maybe in this building, I could put a sign in the hall right, and say, does every apartment want to put in $100 right. for us to install one of these in the hallway? That's really for- what I feel like is, is a huge thing here is if it's only 800 bucks, more companies would be able to supply them too. So, in, you know, your local restaurant would be able to have one instead of your local mall, you know, which does at yes, the moment, yes, you know, so yeah. they'd be much more ubiquitous whenever you're out in public, but gosh, getting them in the home, that's, uh, yeah, that is such yeah. a good mission. Uh, 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 yes. And there are some ways they're, they're uh, reimbursable. Uh, I don't even know what the initials are. Uh, reimbursable by HSA and FSA. Right. I'm not sure what those things are, but possibly it's a way to get it paid for by the government. But that that's the the most exciting thing I've seen in a long time is yeah. to be able to uh, oh and it also you pair it to your phone and it also instantly sends messages to the nearest EMS oh. to, to to come over <laughs> that is so awesome. that when they're revived they can pick up where you left off I, I think it's just a great idea yeah yeah that's awesome it, yeah yeah H- HSA is is I hope I'm not. This is that's the health savings account, which so you could that's where you put it in before taxes, so you could spend it oh, on a did. health savings account. You could use that money. <laughs> Hello, that would kitty. that would be great. Yeah, kitty says exactly. you're getting me one. You're getting me one. <laughs> exactly. She's <laughs> like, uh, I'm sorry. It's been 20 minutes and I need my attention. Um, <laughs> I I love that. That is yeah. th- incredible. It just absolutely incredible. And and uh, yeah, I wish them. Yeah. Make it, uh, make it cheaper. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, first get it approved. My life might then, depend on it. Let's go. Yes, all our lives might depend <laughs> on it. That is uh, awesome. Okay, do you do you remember the Sony Ibo? The Sony Ibo. The, okay, no. the Ibo was the Sony robotic dog. Oh and my it gosh! Was this is like from the like early 1990, 2000s, yes, 1990, yes, yeah, exactly. 1999. Uh, Sony came out with uh, the iBo. Now, I was kind of thinking it was like a gimmicky toy, and maybe a lot of people feel that. But then the PR people said, take a look at this video. So I'm going to show the video. Now I'll show a little one-minute video (laughs) I made with iBo. Uh, And then during all of this, and no one look online, come up with a price. How much is the new Ibo. Okay. So the Ibo was discontinued for a very long time. And then I believe early this year, maybe as late as August, the new Ibo came out. And so let's see two little videos and then see how much Ibo is. So here, the first one is Sony's. Okay. Here we go. One second. Music. Go. There you go. Yep. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. The Bronx. You know what I'm saying? I live on the Upper East Side. Maybe surprised, but I'm never shocked. Let's try and do this in the most glamorous way as possible. I can There's hear the it. There's the eyebrow. And it's like one of the... Oh. <laughs> I feel kind of skeptical. <laughs> okay. A, just a little scared. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Ibo? You're a star in the making. Okay, this I've never seen before. Oh my God. God. Oh my God. <laughs> Can I take it home with me? Yeah. <laughs> sure, open your wallet. Ah, um. uh, yes. Okay, so. Uh, this is my little, 
interaction with Ibo from. Uh, okay, here we go. She yes unveiled. Hey, diggy D. So here Oop, we are. That's not it. This. Burp, this is it. Ibo, I love doggies. Ibo, there's a problem. Uh oh. Yeah. Hello. Here comes in. Here comes competition, Ibo. So there's a second Ibo who is sleeping on his charging pad and obviously cannot wake up. Oh, not his tail. Was he a hit? It sounds like there's lots of people around. Checking lots him out. of people. Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah, you're the Gizwiz guy. Yeah, no, don't back up. No. <laughs> Ibo, what are you backing up? Oh, Ibo. Come on, buddy. Yes, come on. Yes, do it for Chad. <laughs> you see, now you see how I got Ibo. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ibo likes. A... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so, juice. That's how he, you know, stays charged. <laughs> but they are actually pitching this to adults uh, yeah. as a companion. That the new, with all the new uh, AI technology and new senses, that Ibo can be very, very interactive. And I, I, I watched some videos online. There are people who have bought every different model and color of Ibo, but the original Ibo was kind of astounding at the time. 1999, it was 1499. So right. what's your guess as to the new Ibo, since you've never seen one before? Yeah. I'll, I'll go look I remember at the that the original one was expensive. Uh, you, you know, you just said fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. I'm going right. to guess, like, it's still up there, but maybe they've lowered it a bit, so maybe just, like, straight thousand, maybe? All right, we have 4,000, 1,200. We have a couple of 1,500s. Uh, we have Beatmaster comes in at 2,000, 185, oh, <laughs> chat room, chat room, chat room. I think you don't know Sony. It is coming in at 2899 99. Oh my gosh. You can buy the 20, new 16-inch MacBook Pro for that. That's an Apple product. Dollars. Almost three thousand dollars. Dollars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nick D says, "Does uh, Ibo double as a defibrillator?" Now that would be good. <laughs> there you go. If you, if you could take his ears and, and AED, put them on your yeah, chest. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that's pretty crazy. Twenty five cents on Alibaba. So that's pretty. Funny. <laughs> that's uh, quite the price. Holy moly. Yeah. Um, well, and since now, you know, he has Wi-Fi. He comes with three years of upgrades so that he will always be be able to do different things. I'm looking here. Bleak said there's a twenty seven dollar a month plan. Um, yeah, uh, so I know it, it seems pricey. The thing is, I, I guess Tony's very clever. I think they made him like a thousand at a time when they first came out and they would like sell them out instantly because there was like a given number. Right. Uh, so I have no idea exactly how they're selling this, but, um, I mean, he's cute, but. I don't think he's I mean, twenty nine, twenty nine hundred dollars. No. I, I it's, you know, that's like a purebred. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is getting like a real dog. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, you can get paw pads for ten bucks. Yeah. I, I, I mean, could they not throw those in? Yeah, you think. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, I, is, is the dog dish up there? The newest thing is feed Ibo. Uh, uh, I guess it's not there. Um, and oh, there's a little separate video there. You could just start running it because it, it's sort of clever, but it, it, it's sort of clever, but it's very gimmicky. Oh, it, it's in the list of videos I oh, sent you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and, and so what it is, is that you feed him <laughs> and, and even though the, uh, there it is. Okay. So you feed him. 
But if you use your phone, your phone will see food in the bowl. Oh. And then as Ibo eats in the in your on your phone, the food is disappearing. So I mean it's wildly gimmicky. Yeah. I mean So they're using augmented reality so he yes, can exactly. munch on yeah, yeah, food. Exactly. Uh, on food. <laughs> so uh anyway, so chat room if you want to rush out and get one it's before like, they sell out the only way that i would ever be able to like say like yeah sure i understand it is i guess if i live with one for like a month yeah because yeah. like my expectation is he's gonna get old after a day you're gonna see all the, the animations he does after a day and you're gonna be like okay well that the thing is that they say that that he will react differently with everybody who buys him because the different senses react to different things that people do. Got it. I mean, my guess is if you bought one, Charlie would wreck it the second night thinking, <laughs> who wants this thing in the house? Or he'd like walk down the stairs by accident and then there goes <laughs> Ibo. Yeah. Definitely get the warranty on him. The yes. accident <laughs> protection warranty. I mean, I'm watching the animations here just on the website and, and it is kind of amazing how much you know, how, how much he can do. His little legs, legs wiggle in the back. Yeah, yeah. And, and his, his eyes are very cute. His eyes are very expressive. And, uh, yeah. I just, but I don't, I don't see it. I mean, I'd be afraid that it'd be like, what was the, um, there's a tiny little thing made by, uh, the car company. Um, oh, yes. He looked uh, like Wally from the yes, movie. Yes. Yes. And like yes. that was, was super like, cute and great. He was expensive too. But once again, yeah, he was it's like hundred and eighty nine dollars. Yeah. After you spend some time with him, it's like, okay, there's nothing else to do. You're you're it's not a dog, you know, he's gonna get into repetition and bleh, I, don't, I don't anyway. All right, all right. Well, okay. Now I have <clears throat> something else. Does it work with oh, Alexa? I, well, that'd be great. Oh yeah. uh, hey, Ibo, order me some cat wait food. Wait a minute. What what did I just what was I just reading that it's soon going to be working with Alexa? Was it Ibo? That would have been it was some, be funny. something. Yeah, it, it, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, okay, so in that little video, we saw a little robot, and it's called Roby Robot, and this is what he can do. This is the company video about Roby Robot. Roby the robot. Yes. Meet Roby. 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 Sorry. <clears throat> It creates personalized lessons for language learning, STEM activities, and helps with speech delay and more based on your child's individual learning pace. Hello, friend. How was your day? Roybe teaches your children through daily lessons, conversations, and by playing with them. Roybe sees when your child is happy or sad knock, knock. and initiates a friendly conversation Who's with her. This emotional support leads to happier and more motivated children who perform better in academics. Roybe can interact with more than one child, and using facial recognition can greet each of them individually. What was that? Hello, John. And as your child grows up, Roybe does too. It learns and develops alongside your child. Roybe is a great companion for your child. But most importantly, it is access to a huge, cloud-based, ever-developing and state-of-the-art educational curriculum. Your children will always be engaged and happy with Roybe. That is the question. Back our campaign on Indiegogo. Now, we should say that we are marketing this to adults. This has nothing to do <laughs> with Always children. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> there is so, something just feels wrong about that entire product. Something just is like rubs me the wrong way. Oh, how interesting. How about interesting. everything. There's this weird subtext of let the robot parent for you. Like... Am I crazy or am I the only one who no, feels no, that? No, no, no. No, the thing was, 
I, I was a little disappointed is the woman at the show said, and he teaches you seven languages. And if you go on the website, it says right now it's English and one language. And in the middle of next year is another and the end of next year. And it's like four years before your kid oh, will be growing. Your kid will be an adult yeah. by the time uh, the seven languages come out. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting that the camera can see if the kid is happy or sad. I, right. I, I don't know. Is, is right. it too much? I just like it, there was definitely like a weird. I got a weird feeling watching that entire video. I don't. I don't know where it's coming from, but uh, that was. It was. Uh, yeah, I think it was like, okay, if your ch child is feeling sad, why leave it up to the robot? <laughs> Go in there and talk to your child. Oh, oh that's interesting. You that's know? Interesting. Um, yeah. That was And it comes with a camera blocker, so they they must they must have already gotten some <laughs> feedback that right, people, right. people don't want a robot that can Right, and that voice out. is, they need to work on that, because that is like the creepiest little <laughs> voice I have ever heard. I get the... I, it, uh, this one is not for me. This pro. This no, is that's gadget. okay. That's okay. All right. Well, what what you get for price? Uh, expensive as heck, and probably a monthly service as on top of that. Um, I'm gonna guess uh, three hundred dollars for the Roby, and then like twenty bucks a month. Uh, yeah. well, you're dead on for the price. Really? It's that you're dead on two ninety nine ninety nine. Nice, very nice. I'm not going to penalize you for the one penny. You know, they didn't. They didn't talk about. There, it might not, you know, be a. It, they, yeah, monthly I, I, service. I think the lessons are included, but I'm, I'm not sure. No, yeah. uh, my, no. my feeling is that, uh, first of all, uh, when they say the first robot in the world that teaches kids things, isn't it like the 700th robot in the world yeah, exactly. that teaches kids things? Exactly. And when I say kids, I'm talking about adults. Uh, there's nothing <laughs> right. to do. When I say kids, I mean 13 and older, uh, actually. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> um, right. I mean, here's the thing. is, is There was a few things that it mentioned uh, talking about uh, like learning – you know, handy, or I shouldn't say, anyway, you know, I'm sure that this product is, there is a child out there that would greatly, you know, grow with this type of product, you know, and, and I'm sure that there's some parents out there that are screaming at their podcast going, you know, this is, this is exactly what my child needs. You know, they connect better with a robot than they do with other people. And, and this type of learning is perfect. And so I don't want to knock it too bad because I feel like there's a use case out there for it. Just not for, on not the surface for level for me. Not for me. No, okay. Okay. I wouldn't use right. it. That's what I'm right. trying to say. <laughs> so basically, you're not going to get a gift for me this Christmas. But that's <laughs> oh, okay. darn it. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. Um, anyway, uh, so those are those are the three things that uh, I found at CES unveiled, and uh, you and I are going out there to find to gaze through forty five yes. to fifty thousand more. You know, we we didn't even talk about that whole weird weird World Bank announcement. That feels like something uh, oh. straight out of a boardroom. Like that is like yes, yes, uh, yeah. We should. I I, like, wow, I, I'm thinking. Exciting. I'm thinking. Wait a minute. Why do what? I care? What, the I... World Bank, we're going to solve climate change? How, how does a tech convention, like, you guys are, stick to the tech. <laughs> stick to the fact that this is the uh, Consumer uh, Electronics yeah, uh, Show. No, 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 that was the same. As I was watching, I was thinking, what? what? What is the connection here? Yeah. You know, I, I I didn't get it either. That was like right but. out of La La Land. It was like, <laughs> okay, there I, there's, there has no connection with reality at all. It's like, you know, I, I don't know. I've talked to those business types. They're just like, you know, we're doing crazy stuff. We're going to change the world because yeah. we have this technology that will blah, 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 blah. And you're like. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna change the climate back to the way it was, <laughs> with it's a like, million robies. With the World Bank. Yeah. With the World Bank. It's like I know. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, with that, 
I think. Oh, okay, let's hope they don't watch this and cancel yeah. our uh, press Sorry. passes. See, yes, yeah. we love you. Oh, I we can't love wait it. To see we what love you it. Do. And the World Bank, best, the World best Bank. idea they've ever had. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We're behind that a hundred, yeah, a thousand, thousand percent. Not 100, 100. I can't wait. I was just thinking today, gosh, when is the World Bank oh. going to solve my technology issues? Yeah. Well, now that CES is behind them, it, it's I would uh, I would say by February the third. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That is so. Uh, okay. Uh, leaving the world of CES unveiled and moving into a smaller oh, place called Chad's Crappy Corner. Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it. Before we jump Pac too far Pac Pac into Pac W said, now with global saving technology. <laughs> That's this. That's what we need. Uh, That's what okay. The, um, by the way, you know, I mentioned that the cats actually do like the cat backpack. Ever since we covered that, I oh accidentally my gosh. I left it up here, but Waffles is just chilling in it. Told you they like it. She's oh, like, she thinks she's on TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, ooh, this is the bubble. This is... Oh, this is, wow. Look at I'm I'm awesome. in a picture tube. They like it. Okie dokie. So today on Tiny Gadgets, I have this little guy, and I recorded a video earlier about it. Uh, and you'll be able to tell exactly what this is in the video. So let's jump in. Hey, Diggy D. So here we are with this month's week's tiny gadget. And here it is, an itty bitty microphone that should be able to plug into your phone. Now, obviously, I have a phone that... Remember the audio quality chat. right now, by well, the way. Obviously, but I guess yes. now it's obvious that I've explained it. So I needed to get a dongle. So I just spent the last 20 minutes getting a stupid dongle to plug into my phone because this uses a normal headphone jack. So let's unbox it and plug it in. So this is a test of the teeny tiny microphone to see if this is actually capturing with this instead of the camera mic. Oh, okay, that's so, so I'm kind of amazed that it's actually fairly good quality, <laughs> that it actually doesn't sound absolutely horrible. Um, yeah, so if I get it really close to my mouth, I can talk right into it. It looks obviously hilarious. The line for it is like no more than three feet. So the the string um, to the camera kind of makes it not useful for like say CES or anything like that. But, uh, and then I, I highly, here, you know what? Let's see if it does any um, off axis rejection. One second. Okay, so I'm, I'm simulating uh, inside of a CES like environment where there's lots of sound in the background. This is a cheering crowd for how great the Gizwiz is. So that's test number one. <laughs> Okay, so oh, obviously you could use this for a karaoke situation because this has the microphone and then on the other end it has a headphone jack so you could plug in your headphone and you could listen to the music and then sing along with the music at the same time. So there is not a specific app that the you know makers of this microphone uh, have they don't develop their own app they just suggest other apps to use so you can go to kickerlandminimic.com and then you'll you know they'll give you a list of microphone of apps that will work with this microphone setup <laughs> i'm really i'm really I don't know, like, I, I didn't expect this to be anything at all. Obviously, it's hilarious. This is, like, almost the perfect Gizwiz microphone because it's so itty-bitty and, and, and funny. But the Kickerland mini karaoke microphone uh, works. So, good review. <laughs> so, I, I, had, uh, I, I think thought, it sounds. I think it sounds pretty good. I was, like, also, shocked. Yeah. Isn't it, like, $10 or something? Yeah, it's super cheap. It's 11 bucks. Yeah. It, it was crazy cheap. Uh, so I saw it on Amazon and I thought, yeah, I'm I kind of amazed. Now, the off-axis rejection thing that I did, it, it's a little hard to tell just how well it would work in a very loud situation. Um, because, the you know, I don't know. It just didn't seem to... I'm worried about that test, I guess I should say. But... Yeah, it kind of worked way better than I expected. Wow. Um, and I just bought a, a, a mic cable with a headphone jack at the end, yeah. uh, which is great because the, um, when you plug the mic directly into the phone, you have to unplug the mic in order to hear any playback. But when right. you have that kind of a mic, 
the yeah. mic and stay plugged in and you can listen to playback uh, yeah. through a headset. That's that's great. And this is the second Kikoland thing. I told you. Yeah. Kikoland yes. has a boat at the marina. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 1125. That is astounding. Yeah. And then this is that little website that I mentioned, kickerlandminimike.com. Uh, so it has some instructions, and then that's you know kind of it. So if you want to set it up that way, there you go. Belve said it's just a condenser chip. <laughs> yeah, but it works. It works. It's working. I'm. Yeah. I mean, it's not the best. I, I, it's not like PR40 level. But no, <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, I, I yeah. thought it would be better than than nothing. I, you could even hear it, you know, over get over um, blown when I got it a little too close to my mouth. Um, but yeah, so yeah, kind of impressed with uh, with the Kickerland mini mic. Uh, there you go. And yeah. uh, no, this pe is a people are saying, why would you have a mic for a phone? Because in a crowded area. A mic is 10 times, but that mic is probably 10 times better yeah. than what your phone mic is uh, outside or in a crowded room. Yeah. Uh, phone mics just pick up absolutely everything. And right. that mic, even though it's tiny, is going to isolate. If you want to risk sound. it, here's one for <laughs> for a dollar forty at most on oh uh, my Alibaba. Gosh. You oh, get it my. In blue, pink. Or silver. There you go. Oh my! Oh, the one God. that ships from the United States is only seventy-eight cents. There you go. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? <sighs> oh, I'm sorry you got one because this would have been my Christmas present. Look at you. that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Josh is in Washington. I'll get him one. How much is shipping? Shipping does cost ten dollars. <laughs> oh, oh, that takes a little bit. Oh, it takes it's a little. Yeah. yeah, a little of the wind out of the sails. Uh, free shipping from the from China. It's a dollar forty. It'll come in a month, but it's still only a dollar forty <laughs> cents. Oh my get it from gosh! China. There you go. Free shipping. Look at that. Um. <laughs> I, uh, that is really amazing. That's hilarious. I tell you, it's amazing. <laughs> With that. Let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. <laughs> okay, our letter of the week is from Adam Jekowski, J A K O W E N K O. Oh, so it's not, uh, so it's Jack Wenko, not the other name. <laughs> anyway, he his email is Jacko, so I'll just say Jacko. Dick and Chad, I was watching episode. Oh, oh, okay. Episode 1750, where you talked about the problem with Amazon leaving packages outside. I thought I'd share a solution. They came up with a four-way solution. They purchased a package drop box that installs in the garage door uh, from a company called The Vault. Then they used an online company called Fast Signs, and they made a custom sign that they put on the fence and we'll show you that picture. Then they signed up. Do you know about Amazon key? All right. So this is the, th the thing they installed in the wall. Right. Okay. Right then they went to an online sign company and they had this sign made. Okay. Wow. Uh, that used the wall drop to the left, the larger items ring the bell for help. And <laughs> then Don't they have a dog who eats, I eats who delivery. likes to tear up back, uh, bad, uh, wow. bad boxes. That then nice they bought thing. a Nest Hello doorbell, which recognizes people. And Google has recently added package, package detection technology. Oh, my God. That lets you know when a package has been left on the ground. Wow. Yeah. So between the Dropbox, the sign, the doorbell, oh, and Amazon Key, I'd never heard about this. We signed up for Amazon Key. If you have a smart garage op opener, Amazon can actually open our garage door 
and deliver packages. This Whoa. only works with Amazon, wow. but it does help. So between the Dropbox, the sign, the doorbell, Amazon key, we now have a 95% success rate with wow. getting their packages. That is uh, too the, cool. That is, yeah. He said the other 10% of the people are too much of a rush. They don't see the box. They don't read the sign. They don't ring the bell. Uh, these people are lost cause. What are you going to do? <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, love the show. Keep it up. Adam in San Diego. Adam, thank Adam. That, you really are a problem solver. Now you yeah. must have spent some money. Go, can you go to that website, Chad? Which uh, one? The, the, uh, the uh, Devault. Devault. The Devault website. Because they make every conceivable kind of device. Uh, it's devault.com. Uh, D-E? Uh, just, just the letter D. Oh, just okay, the letter D. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I sent the link, uh, but maybe it didn't come through. Uh, Devault.com. Got it. Oh, wow. I want yeah. that. Yeah, uh, and then cl click on residential. Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, my gosh. Come, uh, yeah, look at, look at. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Holy <laughs> moly. Uh, uh, yeah, they make some. That is awesome. Oh yeah, this is this is the little package drop that he has. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't yeah. see any prices on anything though. And that's how you you know it's expensive. Yeah, that's you oh. know that it's expensive. <laughs> oh my Let's gosh, you get to pick seller. every color. Yeah. Wow, this is like for custom homes and that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Know, like... And people were getting things other than the eleven dollar microphone. Right. <laughs> this is if people were getting. You know, iPads and Sony MacBooks. That is so cool. Yeah. I love De -Vault. that. Yeah, I just love De it when I find a company that makes some product that's like so specific and they make it so yeah. well. It's like. Yes, exactly. I love that. Love exactly. that. That is awesome. I think that we skipped the warehouse and went straight to the letter. Oh um, my God, we did. <laughs> We, Should we, we go back did, to the uh, warehouse? Uh, yeah, I know, I know. We, we, I was going to say, you know what? This is not a warehouse item. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yes, go uh, open the, go knock on the door again, Chad. Hey, uh, a warehouse, we're here for you. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away. He takes them out to play in this gadget warehouse. Foghorn. So good, we need to listen to that foghorn a second time. Second time, exactly. That's why we are called professional yeah. podcasts. Nobody else can do what we do. No, and <laughs> no, they do it right. We dare admit what they what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Dix Gadget Warehouse is these subjects is my favorite gadgets art newman sent this in here's a short video of a couple a couple of relatively old gadgets in my personal warehouse they power up but they are no longer supported for their intended use hmm. uh and he has a couple of he has one gadget that is amazing uh art here's your video hi dick and chad i'd like to share with you a, a couple of of my favorite um, podcast and music listening gadgets, which uh, unfortunately I can no longer use them that way because they're so ancient, but they were favorites of mine because of small size and, and convenient ease of use. Um, the first is was what I would call my Fat Nano. Um, big I mean, nano. It, still, it still works. Unfortunately, you can't, um, you can't connect it to uh, your computer to download a podcast or music to it any longer. But I love the color of it. I love the size of it. I had a little uh, leather case for it that would clip it on my belt, and uh, and it was really lots of fun. That was replaced uh, the, later on by this item, which is a Nano. But oh, yeah. This I love. Uh, it, they came out with uh, some enterprising company came out with a strap for it, and because it had a clock a clock app on it. Um, then you could use it as a watch. And I actually carried it around and, and used this as a watch um, for, for all a year or so. The real original this was way before Apple the watch. Apple Watch came out. This was yeah. probably back in yes. oh, 2010 or so. Um, but it's also a complete nano with, you know, with 
used to have the ability uh, to do um, all of the sorts of things that Anana does. Unfortunately, again, it's it's not it's no longer supported by iTunes, um, so uh, I don't know of any way to put something on there anymore. So these are just collector's items at the moment. But they were great fun while I had them, and I still kind of hang on to them, as you know we do, with our old gadgets. Thanks again for the great show. I, I greatly enjoy it every week, um, and I hope it gets a chance to, to see those on the show. That's awesome. The only advice that I would have is sometimes you can get old software, so you can find out what the last iTunes version ran, what last iTunes version updated that, and you could get it so that it will, you can still sync new music over to it. It's like, that's like my only bit of advice. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. I found, I wanted Movie Maker. Oh, um, yeah. And I found that on, uh, well, what's the website where they go back and they... Old software or something like yeah, that. I had yeah, to do so that for chat, Skype before, yeah. Chat room, well, what's, what's <clears throat> the name of the uh, website where, it's a time machine. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I went back to Time Machine and Time Machine had oldversions.com. Old version. There you go. Oldversion.com. Uh, so art that might be a help and and art you'll get the uh, current issue of Mad Magazine, actually the last original of the Mad Magazines and you'll get one of those now soon to be 40-year-old Alfred E. Newman pictures. Uh, this makes me feel for good. sending in your video. The, the most popular old version is Skype 3.8. <laughs> what are we up to now? I, I have no idea. 10 oh. something. I have, oh, yeah. But yeah. Oh, my gosh. IE6. Why? That should just die. But yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gone to oldversions.com to get, to get old versions of stuff before. Uh, that is so funny. Thanks, Art, for the video. Oh, thank That's you. Fantastic. And if you have a video, we have a, a video next week of someone else who has a very old gadget that we'll show. But we're always looking for new videos, especially if you've never submitted a video before. It's so easy. Uh, two to three minutes. It could be as short as a minute. Uh, and like uh, Art here, just a horizontal uh, picture. And we hear your voice and see the gadget. Send it to, put it on YouTube. You can click on listed when you upload it if you only want people with the URL to see it. And send us the URL, mail at gizwiz.tv. If you live in the United States, you'll get a copy of MAD, the latest issue, and an Alfred E. Newman picture. If you live anywhere else in the world, I will sign a picture to you and send you a high-res image. And I forgot the gentleman. It was three weeks ago. Um, he sent in a video and was it Finland? Whatever it was, I sent him a high res image and said, let me know how this goes. And he emailed back and he said, this is really great. Thank you so much. Uh, and I actually autograph it to you. So when you print it out at your end, it's a high res image with your name and my name. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Get us those videos uh, when you can. But soon. Soon. We've already gone to the letter. So we've uh, already gone to the letter. Sure. Yeah, I want to say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. We promise to not use your contributions towards an IBO. We promise. We can 100% <laughs> guarantee it will not go towards an IBO. Thank you so much over there on patreon.com. You guys are awesome. You support the show every single time we upload an episode. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you love the show, please consider giving back over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. If you don't want to use Patreon, you can use PayPal over at our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab, and there is a PayPal link just there underneath the Patreon banner. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that is where you can see the show live. We're live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. And you can join the chat room, hang out talk. It's great. If you don't catch it live, don't worry. We have all the previous episodes there on the website for you guys to enjoy. And you can subscribe on iTunes, RSS, or on YouTube. Head on over to gizwiz.biz. That's Dickie D's website where he has fantastic articles about all of the gadgets that we cover on the show. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? The game show online that you get to play to figure out you know what this gadget is. And it's obvious to me, this is a, uh, a type of table 
They call it the invisibility table because the top of it is completely invisible. The middle has like a, that's you know, nice, nice, support very nice. Part, there you go, yeah. Uh, they had to discontinue it because people kept running into it. <laughs> if you think you know what this is, get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. There are six mad magazines for correct answers, 12 mad magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. So get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. That about wraps it up for our show. We'll see you. Oh, we sure remind people that we're on Thursdays except for Thanksgiving week. Except we're for going to be, we're on Wednesday. Yeah, we're going to do it Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve. So you can have a different kind of turkey on that Thursday. <laughs> see you then, or see you later. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>